a first concern was that in many of these countries we have some safety nets that are often short-term measures adopted in times of emergency but are not standing rights-based social protection schemes. The beneficiaries are not clearly defined, so there's a risk of aid being provided on a discriminatory fashion or being used even worse for political purposes. A second concern was to focus in particular on the countries who are not able to do so currently, particularly the 48 poorest countries, the least developed countries. They face budget constraints that are very serious, very real. They also have a very poor administrative capacity to administer standing social protection schemes. And uh, most importantly, in our view, many of these countries are small e economies, not very diversified economies, who therefore are very vulnerable to shocks, whether internal or external. A third concern is indeed um, uh, the need to the support by a new international mechanism um, countries wanting to move towards establishing national social protection flaws. Now, recommendation 202 adopted by the International Labour Conference mentions the need for international support for the establishment of such national social protection flaws. A fourth concern is one that we understand today that growth with inequality is not sustainable. In other terms, growth has only effective poverty reduction impacts if it is equally shared. And as we all know, despite sometimes very impressive rates of growth in some developing countries, inequalities have been increasing. Um, so these are four concerns, four reasons, that led Magdalena Sepulveda, the Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights, and myself, to propose a new mechanism that we called a Global Fund for Social Protection, um, with two tools, or two pillars, or two branches. One facility branch, um, which is essentially to reward countries wanting to establish standing rights-based social protection flaws by matching their investments with international support. Um, in other terms, it is not uh, paying for social security in developing countries. It is supporting a reinvestment in social protection schemes by the countries concerned. These social protection schemes should be nationally owned based on how a country assesses its situation and what it must uh, define as its own priorities. The, the reinsurance branch is to allow countries to have access to an insurance mechanism, allowing them to be reassured that if one day their social protection scheme is not fiscally sustainable anymore, they will be protected from the shock. The, the proposal was made in early October 2012. It has since then garnered quite some support from the ILO, of course, but also within the Committee on World Food Security at its 39th session in October 2012, has very clearly um, encouraged um, uh, that we move in this direction. The European Parliament says that this initiative is welcomed the Parliament asks the Commission to provide support to these programs, to this idea. You see, the problem is this. We have the ILO, we have the World Bank, we have the UNDP, we have various agencies who would be interested in taking the lead. Now we must define the pathway to getting there. And I believe the best mandate, or the best way to do this, is to encourage governments to give a mandate to this PRB to study what must be done in the next few months to move towards this. Social protection is absolutely indispensable to all human rights. It's also a human right in its own name. Uh, the right to social security is recognized in the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, and it is supportive of other rights, such as, in particular, the right to food, the right to housing, uh, the right to education. Uh, so the right to social protection underpins all human rights.